Hey guys, today I just wanted to make a short a video update regarding Ember's Drift, and this is really inspired by Frank, who tweeted this out today, and it ended up being an interesting conversation. And before we dive into the tweet specifically, I actually have two free Ember's Drift codes that the publisher gifted me after having this conversation over on Twitter. And the plan is, is I'm gonna give them away on stream tomorrow. My friend Chris and I who run work to game uh, tomorrow, we're going to have a live show covering Blue Protocol and some of the latest WoW development news. There was some big news today uh, and Chris is going to educate me on that, but uh, we're going to give away two free codes. So if you're interested at all in Embers Adrift, uh, just note that I'll have some codes uh, to give away tomorrow and you can watch on Twitch or on YouTube. Regardless, uh, check it out. I'll include a link in the description of this video for that. But let's go ahead and dive into the tweet because I just want to talk about this for a little bit and then I'll get you guys out of here and on your way. Um, Frank tweets out, man, bring back that old school grindy MMOs like Ragnarok Online or EverQuest. I miss Ventrilo chatting. I hate how instant gratification the MMO genre has become. I love the feel of teamwork and now MMOs are social single player games. The feel of a guild family that has been missing. And so this is something very interesting. And I think actually Embers is a game that kind of starts to address this. Uh, he goes on to talk about it with other content creators and other people on Twitter. A couple other game recommendations come up. He talks about the open world. And for that, I'd easily also recommend a new world. I think that's still an incredible option for you. And if you guys haven't seen, New World's actually free this this weekend. If you've always been curious, you can check that out. Um, I'll let you go out to the Steam page and you can just download it. So go have fun if you're curious. But for Embers, as a it's it's a buy to play game and there's a subscription, but there is no cash shop. There is no instant gratification. I I, I did have a, an interesting uh, Final Fantasy XI moment in Embers where I was constantly running back to the Ember Rings, which heal you up pretty nicely, rather than just kind of sitting out in the open world, realizing I've been wasting a lot of time. Now, Embers presents a couple of challenges for me personally. No controller support. Uh, that ends up limiting my ability to play it more, uh, more so. It does limit the machines that I have available to actually play the game. And I've heard a couple people talk about how visually it's not that impressive. Honestly, I think... For what it is, it's a very interesting social experiment because here's Frank asking for a game that exists. And in that existence of this game, it's the question of, do people really want this? Do you really want this grindy, old school, no instant gratification game? The lack of instant gratification, I think leads to higher highs and it can lead to obviously that that frustration and it competes against a shorter, lower kind of high, that dopamine hit that you do get from current MMOs, right? And I think essentially kind of when you start to think about these games in the form of drugs, not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but a thing in which that if you start to understand defining the relationship, understanding your relationship with games a little bit more, you could probably start to understand kind of how they have a, a psychological and physiological impact on you uh, and on the things that you enjoy, right? So in terms of this, I think people do remember that. And that's why I find Embers actually so interesting and yet so satisfying, despite the fact that I haven't been able to put that much time into it. I'm more than right now willing to support it, kind of willing to keep you guys up to date. In fact, they just had their latest round of updates, which they've been rolling out updates each and every week, but yet I can't tag Embers in this game description. In fact, YouTube will probably pick a random game. My guess is gonna be Ashes because that's what it's been doing to sign this video too. It is what it is. But with Embers, it's something that I'm very, very curious about in terms of its health and its long runningness. Uh, the developers have been very curious, but there is no marketing behind this game. And marketing is a key aspect. These games don't exist in bubbles anymore. They aren't the only you know kid on the block. And so I don't necessarily know if Embers is going to be worth your investment here in five years, but I can tell you right now, it's definitely not that big of a risk in terms of its cost and price structure. For example, if you don't win one of the two free games that we're gonna be giving away tomorrow, uh, the game actually goes on sale as a part of the winter sale discount. And yes, it might have a subscription, and yes, it might not be necessarily your game, but if you connect to what Frank is talking about right here, if you want them to bring back that old school grindy MMO, like Ragnarok or EverQuest, or I'd say Final Fantasy XI. If you miss that aspect, 
I think you owe it to yourself, or at least I challenge you to try embers for yourself and, and come up with your own conclusion about this game rather than write it off because it doesn't necessarily meet the high standard visual fidelity. Now, if you guys also missed today, big blue protocol uh, news dropped. I covered it over on Ginger Blue. Uh, in fact, that uh, channel is now nearing uh, being able to apply for YouTube partnerships. So if you guys missed that, uh, check the community page I posted the link or you can check the playlists on the homepage if you're not already subscribed over to Ginger Blue. Uh, if you guys want new world content in your feed, uh, you got Ginger World. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep rocking and rolling. And uh, also, if you avoided my last video defending Final Fantasy XIV, um, I, I guess out of some kind of principle, uh, you can also uh, I, I have talked about that. I am debating on switching up the name of Ginger XVI, kind of covering sixteen over there right now, um, into kind of either like Square Enix lore, JRPG lore, uh, something where like I really enjoyed putting together lore and story videos around Dragon Quest and obviously Final Fantasy. And, uh, and so I'm kind of exploring that and I, yeah, any and all appreciation to kind of names or kind of theories that you have would be great. But anyway, hopefully you join us for the live show tomorrow and maybe you'll be able to get a free copy of Embers in this regards, because I, I highly recommend it. It's a interesting game. I wish it was more accessible in terms of controller play, but talking with the devs, I'm like, guys, this is, <laughs> this is, a, this is actually really important. I think it actually work really well with embers. I don't need it to be so fully featured that it just does everything and everything, but at least to have some level of accessibility would open up the game a little bit more because then you could kind of start talking about putting it in other, other ways. There's a handhelds and controller play, especially if you guys haven't seen a blue protocol uh, coming to consoles, uh, they're talking about cross play, cross save, lots of moving parts, lots of really good things to kind of cons consider and th uh, think on, but I'm going to wrap it up here and stop rambling, guys. Thank you so much for your time today. Hopefully you enjoyed this random video. Uh, hopefully I'll see you in my next one. But until then, take care.